that's like right. my choice isn't my favorite move ever. Well, what do we call yeah. it? Okay, Just we got ten minutes. Well, then so like a ten minutes. Of idiots writing in. We have five seconds. Ten minutes. Oh, that's it. Okay. Be quiet for we'll 10 minutes. We'll, we'll throw in transfers. Transfers, Jesus. I'm Edwin Samuelson, and welcome to the Cinephiles. Did you see that wipe? Yeah, that's pretty cool. Welcome to Cinephiles. Like I'm Edwin Wars. Samuelson. Greedo. Uh, let's start off today. And let me introduce to my panel. To my left, Mr. Eric Cohen. To his left, Jeff Galishaw. And to his left, Michael Fultz. All right, what, guys. What are we talking about today? Sidney Lumet, who was just one of your. Uh, now, is it Lumet or Lumet? I believe it's Lumet, my friend. Lumet or Lumet? Well, I'll say Sidney Lumet. Uh, to, as you know, everyone knows, he's a, a vintage New York filmmaker, a one-of-a-kind filmmaker who started his way out in television and uh, plays and directed, I believe he was Yiddish theater, he, they said, and uh, worked his way up and made some of the greatest films uh, that I think are out there, 12 Angry Men. Made uh, a lot of shitty ones, too. Yes, he did, but he's, he's been a very, cons very consistent director. And he is the Prolific director. Prolific, and he's the quintessential New York director. And he's like 80-something, 80 85, yeah, I believe, he's and he's still like making films. Right now, yeah, he keeps himself in good shape, though. He's made some very underrated films, too. Prince of the City is a very you good know movie. Do you remember of his gym? Do you use his trainer? Yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> in the showers, didn't you? I'm the one who gave him his colonic. <laughs> what happened to your mustache? You you don't look like Hitler. Oh mm. God, that was a joke. That oh. fucking sucks. Okay. <laughs> oh Fuck my head hurts. Well, how did uh, Ed? Um, how did we come up with topics for this Sydney Lumet thing? Because I know there's going to the because <laughs> I know there's going to be a lot of our fans out there bitching like, why didn't you talk about this film? Why didn't you talk about this film? These are just well, films that we liked that we thought we'd like to talk we're about. These are the films we're willing to see in order to prepare for this particular episode. Exactly. Other than the more popular ones. And the films that we're going to be discussing. But we'll acknowledge the other films, too. Yeah. The films that we're we'll going to be discussing today are The Hill, Dog Day Afternoon, uh, The Anderson Tapes, and what the hell, Network. The Offense. And The Offense. We can we're discuss that. We're supposed to that. talk about Before and how about the, the Devil yeah. Knows You're Dead. Before the Devil Knows You're Dead, too. But Edwin before the Devil this. took Edwin's uh, TV. Yeah, they did. And we uh, could also do like a brief retro. We could do ret be retrospective, but we'll talk about those four, those those. And then we're going to screen every single Sinu Lumet. But let's start out this one because this is the one that that Mike uh, wanted uh, actually recommended. And I, I chose one. The Hill because when I saw it, I had read a lot about it in uh, film school texts. So I thought, well, as soon as this is going to be available for me to check out, I've got to. But it, it, I didn't actually see it on VHS because there was a time in New York City where if you wanted to get an obscure film, you ran over to Kim's video and you rented the VHS and later on the DVD. But luckily enough, this came on Turner Classic Movies and I watched it and it blew me away. Uh, great performance by Sean Connery. It's, it's, about, it's a military prison out in the, out in the desert, essentially. And it's kind of like a Siberia, but in the desert, actually. Yeah, it's and, really like a no-man's escape. And the hill land. is this... It's more metaphorical. I mean, it's an actual hill where they basically run these men to death as punishment, you know, up and down the hill. But it's also very metaphorical, too, as the, the state of mind that these prisoners experience within this military prison. But the cast is such a wonderful en cast. ensemble. Yeah. You will never, if you folks out there, if you're an Ozzie Davis fan, holy shit. This is one of his finest performances. I don't think it's ever. one of his finest. I think it is his finest. Actually, well, it's the one that really gives him something to do. He's I done mean, a this, lot of good performances. He's done, but this is the one that like really—it's a really meaty part. He is—he is just fantastic. He's fantastic. When he yeah. goes out there in his underwear in protest, I'm just like, wow. And uh, Harry Andrews as the uh, commander of the prison. And let's not forget Ian Bannon, who I always love. Ian Bannon, Ian is, Bannon is, Bannon is a fantastic actor. Good um, character, character actor. And, and Sean Connery. Even though his character has some focus, it doesn't feel like he's like the main guy and everybody's the supporting. It really feels like a true ensemble. It's a very generous performance on Roy his part. Roy Kinnear, too. as wonderful as mm -hmm. the cowardly inmate, along with him. 
Who you guys might recognize from the Beatles movies, one of them anyway. Oh, uh, yeah, he's, uh, uh, he's uh, Veruca Salt's father. Yeah. yeah I, I, I love this one. This was a very good, very big surprise to me. Um, Sid May does a very good job here. He gets a, it's a very well shot movie. Very beautiful black and white photography in this, I have to say. This is was, was, how long was this made after? What year was this? It was sixty six, I believe. It was just during after the after Goldfinger, right? Well, he took advantage of his stardom to get this film made. Got Sidney Lumet to direct, Lumet to direct it, and uh, I love those quintessential sixties close ups that were really popular at the time when they show like extreme emotion, especially like anger. It's, you a get fir- that it's the first up. opportunity Sean Connery had to say, "Look, I can act. I'm not just James Bond." You know, and, and, and he uh, does, and he's and he's done, he's did, does a very he does a very good job here, and he's actually mm-hmm. liked this movie so much he actually worked with Lumet a few a couple other times in a couple other <laughs> films, which is actually a lot of on times. this show, which the Anderson tapes is one, and of course uh, Family Business, the, the, he was the, the, the offense. offense, which we we can't talk about too much because some of us haven't seen it, but we're, we're going to talk about it somewhat. You'll <laughs> get it, you'll get it. But well, uh, but it's a great film. It's a character driven piece. Okay, well, I have my little monologue mic moment here. Uh, I'm going to say, first of all, I don't really like Sean Connery. I'm not going to say I hate the man or his movies, but I would probably say I only like five films with Sean Connery in them for a guy who's been a star so long. And this is probably the best I've ever seen him. I was really taken by surprise because I had never even heard of this film until Mike had mentioned it. And then I rented it for the show to watch it. And I think it's best to go in blind for this film, but obviously if you're watching it, you know certain aspects. The film just blows you away and you can't take your eyes off the screen the whole time. And, I, and as you were saying, um, it is a very generous performance by Sean Connery because everybody- I said that. Oh, sorry. Sorry, Mike, and I'm not, I'm taking away I'm your I'm the one compliment. who said you're very handsome. Thank you for that, but Eric, I agree with Eric yet again. Where I you thought, don't agree with me that you're very handsome? I agree with that too. And, I agree with both of you, but anyway, um, that it gives each uh, actor in the film a chance to shine and make their character memorable. And who played uh, the person who was running the prison? Harry Andrews. Harry Andrews. I love his last scene when you kind when he everybody knows he's lost control, but he still wants in his mind he's still maintaining it, and it's you can see it slowly driving him out of his mind. Mm -hmm. And it's just a film that I still think is still powerful today. Even with uh, a lot of how a lot of prison films show brutality, this film could still stand among them. Well, I love that they like this, that old cliche saying, the inmates are running the asylum. And it's, that's a perfect example of this prison. Great ending. Great ending where it's not cliched and it goes in a direction you're not really expecting, which mm-hmm. I liked. Because I, I like it's just a total it's downer. Sort of, it's a weird kind of way. It's sort of a precursor, something like One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest. You know, where you have the one character in there that, like, you know, went to the will right. of the powers that be. Uh, Actually, that's an excellent analogy. It tries to influence everyone like else, you know. But it's 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 more down to earth, realistic in that regard. Well, like Ossie Davis would be like, I guess, like the chief. He knows his place in the prison, mm-hmm. and you know, and he's just making his time. And Sean Connery's like the Jack Nicholson role, basically going, you know, I'm fuck this system. I'm gonna win here. And he had a legitimate. He shouldn't even be in that prison. Mm-hmm. You know, I think you know he was put there because he pissed somebody off. Great ending. Great ending. Yep. Great ending. And great definitely final one. scene. I should That's say. That's what we were just saying. Yeah. Great, great final movie. scene. Now, Jeff, your choice, of course, is probably his most famous film, uh, oh. which is Dog Day Afternoon. Oh uh, yes. Uh, Afternoon. Which would be, I would say, probably the be- the best, if not one of the, I mean, one of the best, if not the best performance by Al Pacino in a role that's very much, di- very different change of pace for him. Well, yeah, because... Almost uh, as good as Dick Tracy, but <laughs> I digress. I, I was about to say, I would have to... This is the one he should have won that. the Oscar for, if you ask me. Uh, pretty much better than Scent of a Woman, but I guess... <laughs> oh. hoo <Hoo-ah>. hoo <laughs> The thing, um, I guess, with this film, I was used to later Al Pacino film-type roles where he was the tough when I first saw this film when I was a teenager. And I watched this in the dark for the first time um, in my living room. In the dark? Were you scared? No, it was 2 a.m., but I digress. But you're handsome. I know. And I had a mirror up the whole time I was watching the film. (laughs) But um, I guess the thing that that struck me about the film, other than Charles Durning being in the film, because I'm happy anytime Charles Durning is usually in a film. He was fantastic. Mm. And given something to do, too. Yeah, and but one person who... I know he has had a documentary recently made about him, and he's a great actor. John Cazale in this film just blows me away. He doesn't mm-hmm. really have much to do or much to say, but he, other than you know Al Pacino going all over the place, he's still memorable in, you know, because he's always in the background. Sal. Yes, Sal. 
I just, um, I just. I thought you were going to do an impression no, of him no, for a minute. I, I'm not you. I don't do impressions. <laughs> you can't I just, really do John Scazzal. You could, but it'd have to be more of a studied one. But I you just. Feel, you feel like, don't you get the sense that his character was kind of talked into this? <laughs> you know, like, because he's just down in the dumps. Well, that was going to say, now. before we go any further, Dog Day Afternoon is one of those, like, really famous movies everyone's heard of before, but no one really knows what it's about. Like, with the exception of the fact that they're holding people hostage in a bank. And the whole Attica, Attica thing, but but what's if you could go into this film cold, there are surprises there, like yes. why he's holding them hostage, especially <laughs> That's which really is a out of brilliant, field. Yeah, brilliant yeah, left field don't twist, ruin. and introduces. And I'm not giving this away when I say this. Introduces one of the better performances I've ever seen from Chris, Chris, Chris Landon, Landon yeah. Yeah. who got nominated um, for an Oscar and probably should have won it. Probably his best work. Yeah, really. Um, I, I still say that my favorite person in this was probably Charles Durning. I just thought he's he was... He's great in it. You know, I, thought everyone, I thought he was going to have a heart attack when he's trying to push the people away from the front of the bank, the cops. Well, well it's very that. similar. I mean, it's, it's very movie. It's very much a movie of the 70s. It's very similar to like, taking a Pelham 1, one 2, 3. 2 3 is very, you know, very it's a gritty, New York film. Yeah. You know, and it, it opens up with that, that, that Elton John song. It actually works brilliantly. And just so you, know, you see a slice of New York and you see like everybody, like kind of like in the Pelham 1, 2, 3. Then it kicks right into the bank. I think that was actually, from what I, I understand, I think that was actually shot in Windsor Terrace area, Brooklyn, if I'm not mistaken. I believe you're right. Or Kensington, Windsor Terrace, that area. Uh, area. Just for the record, I used to live there. And it also, this film. I don't know why I did is that. I not only Al Pacino's great perform, uh, performance, but it's, considering the performances he gives now, it's a great reminder of what he's capable of. Well, it's sad because now Pacino has become like, the De Niro a, of his well, time. Well, he's a caricature. Both he's become, he's become a person who used to be great yeah. and is basically living off his name. You know, I'm sorry. As much as I love Pacino, I mean, the guy was one of my favorite actors, but he hasn't done anything really great in many years, as far as I'm concerned. Well, um, one thing I will say, though, as Sidney Lumet as a director, it, the film's only two hours long, but as long as the uh, hostage taking takes place, you can start to really see the anguish on everybody who's been sitting there through all this. And like how Al Pacino, you see how he gets wired at sometimes, but also tired. How uh, John Cazal is getting actually physically tired from keep holding this gun on the people. Well, it's a great, the thing I love about the movie so much is it's, it's a very well-written script. Mm -hmm. There's some wonderful things where, where they ask Sal where he'd want to go and he wants to go to Wyoming. He thinks that the country, you know, it just shows you how clueless these people really are. And there's a scene too, which I love where, where they're making the, you know, the pizza delivery. And Al Pacino wants to get a beer, and he goes, "No, no." If Charles Ring goes, "Let's just keep keep the soft drinks." Just stuff like little little bits like that is what makes it so memorable. Is that they're given the script these actors, and they just take these little bits and add them into a whole gigantic piece. And for the cult film aficionados, one of the first uh, acting appearances of Lance Henriksen, Henriksen, who has a very vital yeah. role in the movie, and uh, actually was a good friend of Al Pacino, who got him the role. So uh, definitely the quintessential New York movie. This one in Pelham One Two Three, I'd probably say if you asked me for anyone to say, "Hey, what's the, the New York movies?" These two would probably be it for me. Um, very brilliant performance. And I love the pizza delivery boys. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, very famous line at the end. Hey, Ma, I'm on TV. I'm a fucking TV star. I forgot the line, but it's great. Definitely one of my, I think, what, uh, one of Sid Lumet's best films and definitely one of Al Pacino's best performances, if not the best one he ever done. Um, so let's get to the next film. The next film will be the uh, Anderson Tapes, I believe. Yeah, I well, I mean, I, I wouldn't say it's like one of my favorite. I am so films. happy it's not Thank because. Uh, um, but I mean, we, we were asked to like give throw out names and titles and stuff. I was trying to think of something, you know, be a curveball or something. Anderson tapes. It's okay. Um, I <laughs> felt exactly. that this it's was a caper flick. Yeah, I um, felt that this was Con Connery's paycheck movie. This was this is a no. I don't. I don't know. I don't want to say, say that. I thought Connery was actually movie. very good in it. I, just, I think some of the I, techniques are dated, like I, you know where they have the split screen. It's a very dated film. I think the whole well, the whole point out. of the film was, was that this is a, a guy who's been in prison, and he's totally out of touch with technology of that time. But at the time, the technology wasn't that great. I mean, I would say like stuff that I find annoying is that it, it, it delves into cliche too much, like Martin Balsam. You know, the the, the cliche. You know, <laughs> yeah. it, it's like it's so borders on camp. It's out of tone with the rest of the film. You know. But there's things I liked about it. I liked the relationship between Connery and Diane Cannon. And uh, I think Diane Cannon's terrible. terrible. I think she's I, terrible. I really didn't mind that. I didn't really I was, like the film. I, Christopher Walken. First film. Yeah. His first film. Yeah, first film. I, so I, it looks like such a young kid, too. I like the film, but the problem, like I, said, like I have with it, as you mentioned, Eric, it's like 
it's like someone going, this is state of the art. It's state of the art in 1970. It's like, mm -hmm. I'm going to get you the highest tech computer. It's going to have DOS with a three and a four hundred quince floppy. Yeah, it's, it, it's, and it's, it's going to have a 14.4 modem. It's top notch. It's just so dated when well, you see it. This I would technology. say, but see, uh, that was a very annoying, especially when they put it on the soundtrack so much. You hear, like, all, yeah, that well, got. I, 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 I was wondering what the fuck was well, you know that? What? I thought it was going to be like Logan's but, but, Run. But, you know, honestly, honestly like, just, just the <laughs> Sandman were going to come out. I'm just going to, like, track back. I mean, Mr. Serious. Is okay, this you have a film back? like The Conversation, okay. and obviously that's data technology, but it's still a great movie, and you understand what the point is. Well, it doesn't focus so much on but the But Anderson tape's Anderson not a great Anderson tape, movie. it somehow doesn't work. Well, they're showing it somehow. off as like, this is the latest the, well, the technology. Well, the whole film is, a, is, yeah. And, and it's, it, it, it's pieced together very odd. Like, the whole thing with him talking with those mafia cats just didn't seem to fit in with everything else. And I, I thought really one of the most effective mm -hmm. things about it, and there wasn't much that was effective, uh, in my opinion. I like the beginning with them getting out of prison and they have that one guy, the older guy that's been in prison all his life, and he's just so nervous. He's like, huh. most of these women look like whores and not even good whores. And it's like, this guy is so frightened by the, his prospects outside of the joint. I, I thought it would have been more interesting to follow this guy around I, rather I did than think this that shitty heist the, film. The technology hurt it, but I did think the concept of, of this, this is a heist that's being planned without them being aware they're being surveilled the entire time. I thought that was an interesting concept. And I do like that they're taking over a building where they're robbing an entire apartment but complex. But then you have that like fake Ruth Buzzy woman who's all enthused that there's going to be a heist there. And and then you get the the wimpy husband who gets, uh, you know. It's <laughs> not a and great the movie. I'm not going to deny that. I mean, but I do and, like a lot of ugh. it. I say it's a flawed movie, but I do like the, I do like the actors who are in it. Because there are some great And I don't agree with you on the Sean Connery thing. I think, I, I, think I, I, I felt I think that Connery's he was phoning it in I the whole time. Connery. I thought Connery Surprising was actually pretty one. good, actually. I, in this. I just felt he was phoning I just it. Felt the, 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 the actor I liked the most was probably Val Avery. But I like almost Val everything Avery's Val awesome. Avery's doing. He just doing. died recently, actually. Yeah, I know. Um, but I love this film because I, I do like that, like I said, the, the concept of robbing a building and the, being surveilled the whole time is terrific. Um, I do think, like I said, the dated techniques, like the, the state-of-the-art you know, uh, surveillance, and also the switch screen and the doot 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 on the soundtrack really dates hey, the film. Hey, I'll say this: it's better than Family Business, the last Connery. Oh, well, that's what that's. I wonder if they ever worked that's together. That's terrible. Yeah. But, terrible. Uh, well, I well I have something to say about this film. Also, one thing that bothered me, I didn't really need to go step by step uh, with the cops going from roof to roof to breaking into the building. I thought that was a very big time waster. I mean, I like Garrett Morris. But I really didn't need to yeah, see that. Yeah, that's right, Garrett Morris. That's yeah. right, as a SWAT team guy. Well, since we're just just quickly, since we're doing the Sean Connery and Lumet thing, I mean, we didn't all, all not all of us saw the offense. Yeah, that's probably the I best acting that. that he's ever done. And, and I disagree because I, I was I did not like that well, film at I don't all. Look forward it to felt it felt like I was watching a really crappy play. It's a great. Performance, I just, though it's a, it's an actor's show because it's like a t it's, an uh, it's a play. I felt like I, I could feel him act. You no, know it felt I could, like. I didn't see the honest film, with so you. I, I saw it recently too, and didn't hold up for me because it felt like uh, actor school acting. Yeah, that's what it felt like. What like. we were watching uh, was, was an, an actor we showcase. Were actors that kind of acting. Like Connery, do something challenging. Play a rapist. You mean a therapist? No, a rapist. But no, seriously. I guess. If, if, if I'm so confused by that. But no, he. <laughs> it was just so. Oh, Actually, yeah, just, just just give your whole comment in a Sean Connery accent. Do it. Well, let me say this. It felt wrong. Now I I just. It was melodramatic. <laughs> I'll take the rapist for two hundred, Alex. <laughs> I, I just, I just, I don't know. Like, I agree with Eric, <laughs> and even more so that I just felt like I was watching well, like defense, a, a, inside the actor's studio. I'm not going to defend it all the way, but I will say I do. I like thought Ian Bannon, Bannon was, was awesome. Was good in it. I thought he was. Well, better yeah, in the Connery, the, uh, the perp at the end. Yeah. I like that they're they're dramatic. They're they're butting of the heads. It's much better than than that piece of shit Equus film, which was Lume and did with uh, Richard Burton. Uh, you know, which is another play. Which really feels like a I've play. never seen that. Oh, trust me, you don't want to. It's is it so better than uh, It's a one about the boy who had sex on. with a horse. 
Yeah. But is it better than Murder on the Orient no, Express? No, no, no. He doesn't have sex with the horse. Murder on the Orient Express is not a bad He blinds movie. the horse. Oh, it's because he has sex with I, the girl. I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah, no. I'm sex sorry. with the horse? What the hell? I, never mind. I well, don't, don't forget. They just made it on Broadway with Harry Potter. So that's why. I'm saying he has sex with a horse? He has mm. sex with a horse. Wow. Yeah. He In has the balls the size of melons. Is this just going to be competing? <laughs> horse apples. Hey, Sean Connery. All right. Let's close on that last one. Let's do the last film. Oh, let's talk about that. Don't we have more time? Network. 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 Let's do that. We're we talking about network. We're we'll talking about network. Oh, network. what about before the devil knows you're dead? His most recent film. Yeah, we should talk about that. Even though Edwin didn't see it. I'm sorry. I wanted. To I be really glad enjoyed it. Mom. That is a damn good movie. I, 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 I really enjoyed it. it. One of the better. Devil be, knows you're dead is awesome. Better than one of is the it better. better or e before the devil knows you're dead. It's Wait, before the, the devil. Let me tell you something, you folks. I cannot recommend this more highly. I know and you can put it. And you can put it with the wrestler because if you're a Marissa Tomei fan, you're gonna want to watch this. Because you get her almost completely naked, no crotch shots though, and you get uh, really like solid nudity with the wrestler too, with uh, Marissa Tomei. But she's wearing a g-string. Yeah, but uh, with this film, you also have to include that while you're seeing uh, Marissa Tomei well, you get, nudity, you get Philip Seymour Hoffman nudity too. That, that's where you do this <laughs> to the TV screen. Well, that's why you want the censor to come in and actually blur him out, probably. But uh, I, for this film, I thought it was really well done, especially. Considering Sidney Lumet is one of the older directors, you would figure he would he wouldn't show nudity or graphic violence as much because it wouldn't fit in with his sensibilities. Oh. Apparently, I'm getting an echo, but um, I was I was pleasantly surprised by that. And the one thing that really shocked me, I'm not the biggest Philip Seymour Hoffman fan. I believe he can act, but I didn't think he gave the best performance in this film. Oh, I the person who I did thought gave uh, one of the did better. Look, don't, uh, I'm not Keep Edward. Going. Don't attack me. <laughs> you let the man speak! <laughs> Who I thought uh, gave one of his better performances in his whole career ever was actually Ethan Hawke, who I don't really expect. Which is not saying too much because... Yeah, he... I don't expect much <laughs> from him, so that's why when he is good, I have to make a special note that he's actually good. When has Ethan Hawke been good? That's hard to uh, Training well, he, Day he's been He's been he's good in things. I think he's a very earnest actor. I think he... he you know, you, he's worked very hard. You paid to see him in Daybreakers. Because a in lot Zambia. of his <laughs> stuff is shitty, but he really... You can tell this guy's been working hard. It starts out kind of melodramatic because the, the, that fear in his face, you're like, oh shit, this looks like a baby. Bambi look he but has. then as you go on, it kind of makes sense in your head why he had it because he's essentially an idiot. Just don't yeah. give it away. No, he's just this. an idiot. No, it's good. And Philip Seymour Hoffman is fantastic. He is great in it. He it really just, is good. It just in didn't it. rise to his oh. better performance. It's I re think it's one of his best performances. Yeah. I have to. He, it's that fine disagree. line between I'm being that like sympathetic, but unsympathetic guy, the douchebag brother. Oh, very, the fuck very, up. very bitter. Just a very bitter guy. But but still, that guy that's like smarter than everybody else. Yeah. At the same time. And I love and that scene where he goes in to get his uh, his fix his heroin yeah. fix, but he just wants a club soda. Don't give me too much. I want to I want to Well, I will have to spoil it a little for you, Edwin. All right, One person uh, who I was shocked was even in the film. I Michael Shannon? Him. Yes, I really I enjoyed him this guy. in that film. What, Michael Shannon? That's a big Yeah, uh, I was just saying spoiler. the appearance of an actor you might not know. I wanted to go on because I, I really wanted to see this. I really but did. I just who played the player. father? Yeah. Albert Finney. Wonderful. Albert Finney was really yeah. good in this film. It's a tragic really performance. Let me ask so, you, though. Um, if you guys had a choice of any of your... What is your favorite Lumet film? What is the film that you would say well, would be... Well, all day afternoon for me. Well, here's another film that we could discuss a little bit. I don't know uh, how much time we have. How much time do we have, Gloria? Got the voice of... Okay. 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 Yeah. All right. What right. do you guys think of one of my favorite Lumets? Oh God. The Wiz. Oh God. I, I, I enjoyed. I enjoyed it as a child. I still you know why? It. I, I someone, love The Wiz because it urinating. is so it's odd, awful. and it is so dark. It is a d no, no. <laughs> God. More racist email. Yes. But it uh, but it is a it is a dark film. Like it's not a happy like the like the Wizard of Oz. I mean, it's, it's a little more very, scarier. Yeah. There's like these mysterious creatures that come out of like the the this is almost like a New York film because you feel it in the parking garages and you feel it when they're upstairs talking to the Wiz himself and that like abandoned factory or whatever it is. I don't know. I just thought that. I know Andy Warhol hated this film because he said Sidney Lumet made Diana Ross, Ross look so ugly. And I just thought well, that was such a catty gay thing to say. Role. Well, it's not only that, but also I think that, it, I don't know uh, anything behind the scenes, but I felt like 
if more money might have been put into the film, it might have looked better. Because some of the production design really does look horrible in the film. Like in the musical scenes, you can see the sweat stains on Diana Ross's dress uh, when, whenever she lifts up her arms. Just a little thing I noticed. But, you know, and okay, Mabel King's a little over the top. And Michael Jackson but, is terrible. It's but it's a fantasy movie. film. I and didn't mind like, Michael Jackson. And so I did I. I hated that film. I think it's, it's a film that's very much of its time. I think... Very, yeah. It, it kind of, in a weird kind of way, I know you're going to kill me for saying this, it kind of reminds me of The Warriors. I know it reminds no, me of it. No, it kind of reminds me of that, that too. It has that sort of fantasy. That roller skating. It reminds me of it. It reminds me of Popeye. But, you know, Parking wars, garages. You know, but, but there Nipsey are Russell. things about it that just <laughs> like are really, I, I got to say, there are things about that are painful to watch. I understand it's a musical. I understand it's meant to be a fantasy. But on that level, it doesn't work in the same way that uh, Willy Wonka and a Chocolate Factory works as a musical. And as a fantasy, you know it's, what I mean? Like there's things about it that are just awkward and clunky. Like that whole, there's this like interminably long musical sequence where they finally arrive at what's supposed to be the Emerald City, right? Where all these people are like doing this fashion parade. And it reminds no, it, me it, of the film it, you made us see, it, The it, Apple. It's and where they like, it's, no, no, where they change the colors. And you know who <sighs> was responsible for that whole scene? That wonderful piece of shit, uh, Joel. Um, Shitmaker. Uh, Schumacher. Joel Schumacher, Schumacher was responsible for that scene. Oh, he decorated and he it's choreographed it. Of course he did. It was, it just, it was not going to say it's really it's fucking Schumacher. hard to watch. And there is a lot nice of mugging. When I, met him. I agree. He's I think a nice guy Mike, I Michael him. Jackson mugs and to a certain degree. And Nipsey Russell does it too as, as a tin well, man. Okay, okay, let me throw my two cents in It has Nipsey Russell Hey, I haven't said anything. Let me say something. I'm going to say something. All right. This is what it reminds me of. It reminds me a lot of Popeye. Because Robert Altman did not know how to stage a musical, and he did a. I really event. like Popeye. Uh, I it's like just Popeye. Uh, there are two people who, do, who <laughs> made. There are two flops. Both of them are two I, flops. I hated it when I first saw it. How would you kid, know that? Because a... you don't like musicals. Yeah. Mr. Samuel, how would you, you know what a good musical or bad musical is? It was a good director or a bad director. The only thing I didn't like about The Wiz is when Nipsey Russell is crying and goes. Well, it was kind of like he was rusting. Oh. Yeah. What else, anything it else? It has Nipsey Russell. <laughs> I want to mention one other movie that you guys should see, which is Prince of the City uh, with uh, Treat Williams. Treat Williams. Okay. So. Even though it's not, the, I don't think he, you know, is not the, the actor to carry this thing. It's the movie itself is a terrific New York piece, and it had a lot of terrific. Uh, Actually, uh, Jerry I'm going to say also Q and A is a really interesting film because Nick Nolte delivers a frightening performance. But it does have one of the worst movie songs ever. I do agree for Lambert Malton. Never double cross the ones who you love. What is this Q and A? Yes, which is actually Ruben was. Blades does You know, song. you were talking about how uh, Ruben Blades, Blades, Blados. That Dog Day Afternoon was one of the quintessential New York movies. Another one that Lumet made that you could say is also a quintessential New, New York movie that I thought was actually boring was Serpico. Serpico. Serpico's New York Times. A, I, I thought, I thought little, Serpico was pretty pretty boring. I think it's a terrific movie. I like yeah. Serpico. I, I don't like think it's Serpico. a great well, film, but again. I like it. It's not the most exciting thing uh, in the you world. You contradicting me? Yeah. You're wrong. Okay. I like Serpico um, more than I like Prince of the City. Uh, Palm oh. Broker. Pawn Pawn broker. Pawn broker. Oh, excellent. Pawnbroker's awesome. Rod, Rod Steiger. Great Rod, Rod Steiger performance. But once again, it goes back to that same thing that I told you where the quintessential 60s mm -hmm. shots of emotion like we had in The Hill is that clo extreme close-ups of like the, the anger, the frustration. You also, get that very with the shocking, Pawn broker. very shocking nudity for that time because it was before the production code. Um, very well-made movie, and uh, I do love how... Where you see before the production code, yeah, before I mean, the production, after production code. It was before, just before. It's not an R-rated movie. It's not. It doesn't have a rating. But we talking about the Hayes Code? Uh, no, the the ratings board, the, the uh. BAA. Um, what I think about it too is I like that Rod Steiger character is, is a bigoted character, but they have a whole explanation for this, and it's kind, it's very interesting the way they. Did anyone here see that film with Vin Diesel consistent. in it? I no. did. Find me no. guilty. Which was originally supposed to star Joe Pesci. It looks so shitty um, that I couldn't. Uh, I, it's not as bad as you think. It's just that. It, getting Vin Diesel, a guy who's obviously in shape and young, to play an older character with a paunch, and that, wh it, that what stretches about that the believability. Hair? What about the hair? Well, I mean, he's bald, too. So, I mean, Come the wig on. is horrible. Vin um, Diesel is not a but good enough actor yeah, to but do he's that. He's not as horrible as you would think. I'm not trying to defend his acting. I'm just saying it's passable in the film. Was it a good film? I thought it was enjoyable. I wouldn't necessarily recommend it, but if it was on right. television, I'd say give it a look. What I mean, the cast has other good actors, and it has Ron Silver in it. It has, God, he's what's dead. his name, Alex Rocco, who he, I always like. Yeah, well, Ron Silver did a lot of work with Lumet. Um, what would you say is one of uh, Lumet's worst? I say, I say Gloria. 
You think you think yeah, the Wiz the is worse than Gloria? I forgot about and Gloria. And Night Falls in Manhattan. And Gloria, Manhattan. Gloria Manhattan. is Night Falls in Manhattan has Lauren Liebman. He's terrific. Uh, Night Falls in Manhattan. Glor not Gloria bad. was incredibly disappointing considering that it was based on made that. Yeah. Um, I would say Family Business. Family Business. That's pretty horrible. Equus is pretty just, bad too. I guess that's probably the worst movie. I haven't did. seen that. Actually, got great. No, seriously, that movie got some really high uh, nominations from the Academy, okay. like Best Supporting Actor, a Best Actor. It's, it's a terrible movie. If there was actual horse fucking in it, I might see it. Well, that's a quote we can all end on. All right. Well, anyway, it would make it more until next until yeah. next week. I'm Speaking Edward of horse Anderson. fucking, what happened to your mustache? <laughs> I have no fucking idea. You don't look like Hitler. Thank you. All right, You're roll the credits, please. Is, I have we have no more to say on this. Are you gonna? It's like he's ears, waxed like his lips. I mean, look at it. it's like all yeah, shiny. Yeah, it's all, all no. It's yeah. kind of infected, isn't it? It's, it's, it's yeah, like a lot of burns. It hurts like hell. That's where I thought you. Why didn't bleeding. you just dry shave on camera? Oh, that yeah, that would have would been it really great. kill you to wear rouge? <laughs> Thank you. Okay, we're gonna change. So we're gonna do Avatar.